Good morning and welcome to your marketing coffee break. I'm Vicki Wu and we're going to continue our discussion of the new SEO. By January 2018, there was already an average of 1 billion voice search queries every month, proving that voice search is already on the rise. By 2020, experts expect that 50% of, or more of all searches will be done by voice, and 30% of all website sessions will be done without a screen. So people won't be sitting in front of their laptop or even their phone web browser. Local SEO already drives around 58% of all voice searches, and most Businesses aren't prepared, especially small businesses and entrepreneurs. They've been doing the traditional keyword SEO and, and getting really good at that. But voice search and just some of the changes in the algorithms are changing how people search and you need to be ready. Voice search is used really heavily when you consider Siri, Alexa, Cortana, and Google Assistant. I have Apple, Jeff Bezos, and the people at Microsoft in my office right now, and I can talk to their assistants at any time. It's great for productivity, also kind of creepy at times. How can you optimize your existing website content to be able to reach those voice searchers? Two really huge takeaways I want you to think about are completely changing your thinking about search. First big one is natural language and conversational flows are critical. And the second one, I don't want you to think about voice search as simply a search method. You need to consider it as an overall marketing channel and you need to have an overall marketing strategy for it. Let's delve a bit into some of the more technical aspects of voice search. Some of the things you need to be considering where your website is concerned. All of these pieces are what we're going to be walking you through hands on in our SEO group that you can start signing up for at the end of this month. But if you're willing to go on it your own and do a bit of research, I'm gonna give you the overview and you can take it from there. First, Mobile site speed is critical. Even when you're testing your site using like Google, Google's uh, mobile site tool, you wanna be sure that you're paying attention. There's both a desktop version and a mobile version. You don't need to be optimizing for desktop as heavily, although you still want to do that. You wanna be paying attention to those mobile numbers. Using tools like AMP and some other specific tactics can really help go a long way into decreasing your site speed. And a few milliseconds can make the difference, especially when you consider a lot of the search is moving towards not the individuals being willing to wait a few milliseconds more for your website to load. It's an algorithm and algorithms move a lot faster than people will have patience for. So you really need to keep in mind that those few milliseconds of site speed can really impact whether your content is even provided to the searchers or not. You also wanna be sure you're using structured data. One example is for businesses, you used to hear to include the words near me in your keywords when people are searching that won't actually help you anymore when it was the hard standard, you know, people searching for donut shop near me a few years ago, even, even a couple of years ago, that might've actually worked. But now all of these voice assistants are using geolocation data from your business, such as Google is using information found on your Google, my business, such as your physical address, structured data or schema markup you have on your website to feed results that are geographically located to pinpoint where the prospect is at. So including 
those literal or literal near me words in your website copy won't do it for you anymore. You need to make sure that other pieces are optimized. Again, all of these are things we're going to be walking you through hands on at our training that you can sign up for at the end of the month. You also want to make sure that you have answers to questions that those answers are maintained in that around 30 words or less. We discussed that last week. And so you want to be sure that you're including some structured snippets in your copy. You can also, if you want to go even deeper, look into developing some skills and actions that are for the specific voice search platform, such as Alexa and Google. Then you can be kind of training your existing website visitors and existing clients to use that specific skill on Alexa or Google to engage with your content. You can do this through Alexa has a Alexa skills page. Google developers has a actions page. You can delve into that a little bit more. Again, we'll be going over some of that in our hands-on training as well. You also want to make sure you're using long tail keywords and questions in the past when you were told to just use, for example, that, you know, donut store and exclude all of the words like is, how, that, where, things like that. You want to be sure that you're including those words now so that your copy in your content to more directly relates to the exact sentence that people are using. Years ago, people only, they were taught to only search for that really tight keyword when they were typing their search into Google. And it has changed drastically now, especially with voice search. People search and talk in full sentences. So the closer your copy is to that full sentence, the more likely you are to be found. Also, you want to use those same long tail keywords or questions in your answer to your website visitors. If you do some long form content with multiple questions and answers, you can actually naturally develop a really keyword rich document and be more likely to possibly have that content found in a voice search. We have actually a five-step process that we use for finding some of these long tail question format keywords. And you can use this process too. I'm only going to give you the overview of it. First, um, search in Google to find out what language customers are already using in those long form keywords. Second, doing further research on tools like Answer the Public, for example, to find related questions that could be used in the content. Third, thinking about the content, you know, planning the content. What format would be better? Is it a podcast? Is it a blog? Is it a series, a video? And is it in paragraph format or is it a list or a table like we discussed last week? Then further planning the content um, optimizing it for looking at the competitors that are doing it. How are they presenting the information? How long is their information? Kind of getting an idea of that to further plan your content. And then determining what are those people missing? So you need to do a little bit extra research there, actually delve into what they're providing, read the article, listen to the whole video, listen to the whole podcast. And is there anything that they're missing? Are they talking in acronyms that people don't understand that spelling out those acronyms would be helpful? Are they not answering another question that comes to mind when you think of the content? What you really want to do is be able to kind of Find those gaps, niche down, and really dislodge your competitors there. One other tip I want to mention when I'm telling you to kind of pivot your thinking on search in general is also to change one of your pieces that you're looking at when you're looking at reporting and analytics. 
used to be that the bounce rate was one of the key components that people told you to watch in your apps. And that was very true when it was more likely that people were using short keywords and probably ending up on the home page of your website. And then they had to, you know, go click a couple times to find the answer. You know, they had to click on a category or a topic and then go find, you know, scroll and find the article they want and click on it and read the article. When people move from one page to another page on your website, that lowers your bounce rate because the bounce rate is considered when people land on one page and then leave. Traditionally, Google and the other search engines looked at that as if your website did not provide the answer needed, and so a high bounce rate was bad. However, with the voice search and these long-term question format, it's very much more likely that people are being directed to the exact page on your website that answers their question. And after that, they may not necessarily need to visit another page on your website. They may complete a form on that page or ask you know, a comment, or they may see your phone number and pick up the phone and call you and then leave the website. And while that gives you a higher bounce rate, it doesn't carry quite the same you know, negative connotation it did before because their, their information was still being answered. So in changing your thinking about search and kind of pivoting your thinking, you need to also consider some of those other pieces as well. Again, I want to remind you that at the end of this month, you can sign up for our SEO program, which is going to walk you step by step, hands on through a lot of these pieces that you need to be developing for your optimization now in this new SEO. And we will be teaching you this five step process to define your long term keywords and kind of plan your content around it. Visit our website for that information to sign up for that program, get more information. In our next part of this series, we're going to be discussing one of my favorite topics, which is search user intent, where they are in their search journey, in their buying journey. And this is one of the areas that the more technical SEO people never really touched upon. They were more focused on, you know, adding those keywords, adding the meta tags, all of those things that you still need to be doing, but they were more focused on the back end of your website. But as a marketer, it's one of the pieces that we've always looked at is how can your website content mesh with different points of the customer journey, having specific call to actions that drive some of that journey. And because of Google's switch to this user intent, it becomes even more critical. So I'm just thrilled that we were already doing it. You need to be doing it also. It's also why I don't always recommend if you're a small business or entrepreneur and you're doing a lot of the SEO yourself, you may not have time to, you know, time is a valuable resource and you may not have the time to do all of the pieces at the same time and you have to kind of structure it out. So it's why I don't always recommend jumping into the traditional, you must optimize your keyword immediately. There's another step I always recommend you take before you get to that place. And we'll be discussing that again a little bit further in detail in our SEO group but we will be talking about that a bit on next week's cast, so you don't wanna miss that. And then after that, we'll have one more wrap up in this series to help you use new SEO techniques to really get your website seen. So if you have any specific questions or comments related to this week, drop them down below, or you can always visit our website and ask. And of course, marketing questions in general, you can always ask those too. We'll either try to answer you directly, or we will discuss your topic on one of our upcoming shares. Until then, see you next week.